One of the most common causes of impaired hearing in young children is glue ear, also known as secretoriotitis media. This condition is one of the most common causes for contact with a family doctor or otologist during childhood. The diagnosis of glue ear is done by otoscopy, otomicroscopy and tympanometry. What is seen in the microscope is yellowish effusion behind a retracted tympanic membrane. To understand glue ear, it is helpful to have some knowledge of the anatomy of the middle ear. The middle ear is an air-filled space encapsulated in bone directly behind the eardrum. It's made up of three tiny lever-like bones that carry sound vibrations from the eardrum to the inner ear. The middle ear is connected to the back of the nose by a narrow channel called the eustachian tube. This tube normally remains closed and will only open when you yawn or swallow to allow equalization of middle ear pressure. If the eustachian tube becomes blocked or swollen, a vacuum of air builds up and the only elastic part of the system, the tympanic membrane, is sucked into the middle ear. The vacuum also causes thickening of the middle ear mucosa, which produces a fusion which fills the middle ear cavity. At first, the fluid is thin and watery, but after a few weeks it can become thick and glue-like. The philosophy for treatment of glue ear is to equalise the vacuum of the middle ear. One way to equalise the vacuum is to inflate a balloon through the nose. This procedure produces a hyperpressure in the nasopharynx, which will open the blocked eustachian tube and equalise the negative pressure in the middle ear. If otoscopy is performed after a successful inflation, air bubbles can be seen in the middle ear effusion and a retraction of the tympanic membrane will be illuminated. As the vacuum is equalised over time, the effusion will drain and hearing normalised. To get good compliance with the treatment, it is a good idea to let one of the parents do the first inflation. This makes the next inflation easier for the child and the parent experiences how the treatment works and feels. The child can see that it's not dangerous to inflate the balloon. Next, she tries the inflation herself with the help of the doctor. In many cases, the child will feel a click or a fullness in the ears during the first inflation and an immediate improvement in hearing. Now the child feels confident to try the procedure herself. If the balloon treatment is carried out three times a day for two weeks, the middle ear effusion will be cleared and hearing will be normalised in 50% of children.